thank you everybody for joining today's coffee break uh, where uh, we're going to be talking about comparing all the different methods that you can use to connect SCON with the rest of your tooling and um, particularly focus on getting stuff into SCON as opposed to out of SCON um, which is what we're kind of traditionally focused on and uh, I'm very happy to announce that I have a uh, panel with me today um, but before we get on to that just to say as with every coffee break uh, we have Slack open for Q&A, so if anything comes up now or um, at any point, feel free to post it to Slack where we can take it. Um, that uh, lives sort of obviously longer than the webinar as well, so any old time Slack is open for you. Go to scomathon.com forward slash Slack to join. Um, so without further ado, let's kick off. Um, so I'm Bruce Cullen, I'm the Director of Products here at Cookdown, and I'm glad that it's not just me today, I'm joined by, by two guests this week. I have uh, Anthony Ashmead, who is an Enterprise Monitoring Consultant at Aroop. Hey Ash, how are you? Hi Bruce, you good? Can you hear me okay? Loud hear me okay? and clear, all, all good, yeah. good to have you with us. Um, Thank you. This is the second time you've joined me on a webinar, but last time was a, a kick down one. Um, 2019 from memory? Yeah, I think pre-COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID <laughs> okay. in the good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us again today. And uh, I'm also joined by Vincent Babin from uh, Squared Up. You're a senior product manager. Hello, Vincent. How are you doing? Hey, Bruce. Hello, Ash. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, glad to be glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, just a bit about myself briefly. Uh, I work mainly on the on the scum edition dashboard product that we do at squared up uh, and more recently on eam uh, x but we'll get to hear more of that uh, a bit later Spoil no spoilers vincent we'll, we'll figure out what eam x is later but exciting to see um thank you for joining us uh, so let's dig in um let's look a little bit to start with at why uh you actually might consider connecting scon with all the rest of your tooling why centralize um on any tool well the reality of it is that SCOM doesn't live alone um, in your infrastructure. You likely have more than one monitoring tool and each of those tools is generating alerts and incidents and notifications in various different formats on various different channels. Each of them has their own dashboarding solution or way of consuming those alerts, those notifications. And ultimately, it's all monitoring data. Um, so the case for kind of standardizing on a tool is relatively clear, you've got uniformity there. Um, so let's just dig into the other tools piece a little bit quickly. Um, so is it real that other people have more than one tool for monitoring in their infrastructure and don't just rely on SCOM? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. So this is data from the big SCOM survey from back in January of this year. Uh, we can see that um, of people that answered to a question around what other monitoring tools do you do, um, Azure Monitor and VR Ops were the uh, winners of other tools that you have, but there's a large list of tools here. Um, we had 81 respondents to this survey and only two only use SCOM. Uh, which is in no way surprising. This is a trend that we saw um, from previous big SCOM surveys as well. The specific question that we asked was, what other tools do you use for monitoring, obviously, apart from SCOM? And we had 224 responses to this question and 81 people in total, meaning on average, people have 3.8 monitoring tools, uh, including SCOM. So it's very clear that everybody has multiple tools. So I've convinced you of, of something and that there is the need to standardize uh, and life will be simpler if you do. So the next really obvious question is, well, I've got lots of other choices here. Why should I standardize on SCOM as my place to pull everything into? Well, SCOM has really great coverage. Um, it's got, uh, you know, all of your infrastructure in it, in particular on-prem, in particular Windows, um, but versus other systems, we find that SCOM sort of density is, is greater and by virtue of the fact that SCOM has been around for a very old, very long time, it's a very mature product, um, which means it's trusted, it works, essentially. Um, it has a very strong community, what with us here at SCOMathon and, of course, Silex MP University, as well as forums and the like as well. It's a really, really flexible tool. You can pretty much make it do whatever you want. Recently, I went to a, a conference. I went to uh, InfoSec Europe in London, and I came across a tool called Tanium, which I'm sure some of you guys will have heard of. 
and Tanium advertised themselves as essentially an agent uh, agent based network that you can use those agents for anything. And and I've got scum alarm uh, scum alarm bells ringing essentially in my mind. This is sounding very familiar. Uh, a load of agents that you can use for something specific or whatever you like. People don't realise that scum can be used for pretty much anything you like. Well, you have a scum agent. You have all the power you need to do whatever you want. Um, there is a great deal of familiarity with SCOM, partly due to its maturity. And of course, SCOM is easily extendable, uh, what with its capability of writing management packs. Some of the other systems I mentioned are much more closed, much more ven vendor specific, thinking VR ops here, for, for example. Um, great for VMware, not so great for everything else. Um, so SCOM makes sense. In particular, its object model is fantastic. Um, it gives you a really flexible kind of base to build upon um, with, with custom classes and objects and the relationships between them, allowing you to kind of create what you want essentially in SCOM. So SCOM is a good choice of tool. Um, so how do you actually go about achieving this reality? Now I've convinced you that you want to centralize on SCOM, essentially. Um, there are many options. Uh, let's have a look at what they are. I'm going to present sort of two today and then go into some, some more, but in less detail. And the first one we're going to talk about is a thing called EAMX. And this is the point where I stop talking and I hand over to you, Vincent. So let me make you presenter and uh, take it away. Thanks, Bruce. As I share my screen, might be useful for, for you, Ash, maybe just to introduce your, your role at the roof and uh... Yeah, um, sure. It's your responsibility, I think, is going to help probably a bit. Uh, yeah. So I'm Anthony Ashmead, or Ash, as you've probably heard me call. I'm uh, the service lead and enterprise monitoring consultant here at Arup. Um, my team is enterprise monitoring platform, so we are responsible for your core enterprise application infrastructure and platform monitoring. So um, we're really focused around IT operations, uh, incident management, and getting those business critical alerts surfaced into uh, you know a sort of single view that our operational and 24/7 um, teams can use. So we're responsible for for the consultations on those, the implementation, configuration, and and finding uh, gaps, which we're going to talk about today, obviously, um, and trying to fulfil those requirements from all different uh, parts of the business. Sounds good. Excellent. I mean, uh, I'm trying to share my screen so I can. I can uh, Maybe I can be do anything. You are able to give me a make me presenter, maybe? Um, should already be done. Let's try giving it to you yeah. again. Ah, the joys oh, of technology. Right. It's good That's when it a, works. Do you have what you yeah, need? Good. Uh, I think I do. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, thanks Ash for, for setting this. I think it's really useful because your obviously as you said, SCOM is is at the center of your uh, yep. of your monitoring uh, uh, world. And then what we're trying to to do with EAMX is make that uh, make SCOM better. So hopefully uh, uh, that you know if SCOM is the center of your world, then EAMX should make that uh, SCOM better. Um, yep. So uh, what we'll probably uh, start with if we go go on the next slide. Uh, luckily we ha haven't got many slides. It's going to be more for a product demo and for Ash to, to, to let us know how, how he's actually using it. But, you know, we, we've come to recognize that SCUM is, is great, as you've highlighted, Bruce. I mean, it's got so many benefits. Um, you know, what, one of them is management packs, the extent, extensibility of it. But, you know, there are some complexity with that, some, um, and, and therefore some blind spots, as, as we, we kind of call, call, call them. And if you get your data center sort of back to your platform, VMware, sort of wins, like your Kubernetes, or I think they were in your list, Bruce, pretty, pretty high up some of them. And, yeah, yeah. You, you've got management packs, you've got options, but um, you know there are some either limitations or. or, or, or um, the, the biggest okay. issue is simply that management packs are really, really difficult to author. You know, um, very time consuming. So while you can do anything you like with it, any tool that will give you some advantage, you don't have to author all of those custom management packs yourself. Will will be super valuable. So yeah, I'm yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> and I guess the other reality is obviously as you know we we've all moved to the cloud, right? I mean is a, a little bit fully partly, but but in some ways we you know we are perhaps not just doing infrastructure, but it's about application services. And so, you know, when it comes to, to those platforms, AWS, CI C D pipelines, Kubernetes, I had it on the left, APM tools, you 
right? They, they are in, in, in every organization and today, and, and they are they are hard to 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 um, sort of view in scope. I mean, Ash, was, can you relate to this problem in your, yeah, in your yeah, organization? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, like you said, I mean, the, the kind of left hand side of that with the data center piece is what, um, you know, your kind of old school monitoring when you were looking at your infrastructure, your platform servers, databases, nodes, um, and the visibility piece on the right side is something that's hugely come into the forefront over the last couple of years with people using Azure AWS mm. um, as your monitor, not really being sort of out of the box like SCOM is for a lot of the stuff. Um, and certainly with APM tooling, things like that, you've got lots of native ones within Azure and AWS, but they're, they're kind of hard to, to kind of centralize into SCOM or to certainly with AWS, with the way the accounts work is you, you end up with dashboards for each account, not even one that you can you can have across sort of spanning all of your applications. Mm. So, um, yeah, we certainly got in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, huge blind spots from AWS. Um, it's fine if they're, if they're on EC2 if it's a server because we can target it with an agent. But the majority of stuff that goes into AWS is kind of container-based, code-based, um, serverless things like that. Mm. Do you have? Um, uh, I've got the time or the skills to to write your own management pack. Is that, is that something you've done um, before? Maybe acquired one. From, from we have have done. Um, I mean, it's the problem is resource um, time. To do it because there's literally two members in my team including me so um whilst we've got some coding skills more on my colleagues part just uh, as you guys know i'm more sort of old school stuff than coding but yeah it's, it's just resource and time i mean we're, we're literally flat out with what we do so to to be able to find one or to or we just turn around and say well sorry we can't fulfill your requirements which within it operations is is just a non-star so we have mm -hmm. to find a way of doing it mm -hmm. Yeah. You sent me um, a screenshot the other day of your kind of the, the current situation of what, yep. what you are monitoring can see today. And there is yep. a, at least one blind spot on there. Would you like yep. to come up on this dashboard? How that's... Yeah, sure. So this is our um, our service desks dashboard. So anything they're responsible for at a tier one level per escalation and 24 seven monitoring, the majority will all of the, the tone that's tiles you can see there are pulling data from SCOM direct or it's pulling it via the integration that we have with Azure um, and, and any management packs that are that are there and that are actually fit for purpose. Um, we kind of, like, like we edged on earlier, we, we haven't got the time to develop. So we're either reliant on management packs that are free, which when you look at something like SolarWinds or AWS, are not really fit for purpose because they're not being developed continuously. So certain elements of AWS, like elastic load balancers, only target classic ones in old school AWS format. So you can't you can't use those. So we needed a way of fixing, um, pulling our SolarWinds data, for instance, is our core network monitoring tool. We wouldn't attempt to do that with SCON because it's SolarWinds is the best of breed for that, but we have to pull the business critical level stuff in, which is um, what we're going to cover now, obviously, where we were missing our AnyConnect VPN nodes, basically, that we needed availability statuses of within this core dashboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, let's take a look at it. It's yeah, green is the first thing I'll say. You know, that's always a, a good first step. Very, very rarely do you see a sea of green. <laughs> Yeah, it's because we and do that's it a right. Real dashboard, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real live dashboard. There, I mean, you can see the yeah. one's got 131 devices under it, mm. which is spread across um, Amazon a little bit with the yeah. with the direct stuff and mostly um, Azure on-prem mm -hmm. web tests. So. All right. Nice. Well, let's have a look at uh, how we we could uh, solve that 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 little issue of yours, which is uh, you'd like to show. So you want to show some some. Objects from SolarWinds. I know you you guys are using AWS as well, so we'll, we'll kind yeah. of cover a little bit of that yeah. as we proceed. So I'm going to do, I'm afraid, a little quick slide, but very quick. Um, that's where we come in and sort of talk about EAMX as a, as a, one of the option, one of the solution potentially to sort of getting the big picture. Um, EAMX. We're, we're going to go do a product demo, but essentially it lets you extend SCOM by plugging directly into into sort of your your, your main tools. So we've got plugins available um, through a, um, a, a separate platform, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so if yours is that VMware or SolarWinds uh, or, or, or maybe AWS CloudWatch or whatever tool it is with, with 50 plus plugins, hopefully, hopefully we've got you well, well covered. Uh, and it's powered by the Squared Up ecosystem. And that's really what we are going to 
to go through today, essentially. So I'm going to basically flip over to uh, a new part of the Squared Up ecosystem, which we call Squared Up Cloud. It's a SaaS-based uh, platform, and I guess that's where you you started, uh, Ash, when you when it came to to SolarWinds. You had to sort of connect, use a plugin, connect to SolarWinds, and and yep. start uh, mapping things out, isn't it? Let's uh, yeah. Just look at that maybe. Uh, add a plugin just to show which one. What else did you did you did you add? Uh, as, as so plugin? so far, we've got m multiple AWS connections. Okay. Um, we've mm -hmm. obviously got the vCenter plugin um, running yeah. to the relay and AV and the um, yeah. SolarWinds one running to a relay as well because both those yeah. platforms, SolarWinds and and our uh, vCenter, are on premise. So we use the the relays. Yeah. That, yeah, that's, that's just a good point on the relay. I mean, how, um, yeah, so we, we kind of have two different types of plugins. One is you connect you directly and those are yeah. traditional on-premise. So you, yeah, you have to use that, the, the squared up yeah. agent relay to do that. Yeah. How, um, how, how easy was it in general sort of connect to, to sort of Yeah, it's say, really yeah. straightforward. Um, I mean, it's obviously easier to, to map to something like AWS because you're going SAS to SAS in, in, in theory. Um, yeah. And then obviously the plugins are easy enough to install on a on a local machine. Um, mm -hmm. We use your watch nodes that are attached to SCOM to all our synthetics. So we decided to use those, installed the plugins, um, and of course then it means that the authentication and the bits that are happening within that plugin are within MFA and on premise in theory because yeah. they're within our network. Mm -hmm. So it's good for security as well. But yeah, really easy, and straightforward to, to set up. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Uh, the cloud ones, to be honest, in my experience, are the easy ones to do because they have a consistent publicly access accessible API. Mm. Whereas yeah. on prem, you know, it's a bit bit of the wild west up there. So that's interesting to see. Um, it might yeah. be worth, for instance, giving a, a kind of brief overview of uh, how the cloud product sits alongside the on prem product. Because to some 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 folk watching, um, they'll never have heard of Squared Up Cloud, and it, this will all be new. So yeah. I think that's probably worth yeah. covering. I'll do a, a, a one minute quick link between the two and then we'll come back to Squared Up Cloud. Essentially, once what Ash you would have done, you would have added the say a SolarWinds plugin. And what, what we what we do when you do that, we sort of index and find all your objects and hosts. This is a, our demo environment. And with that, you essentially started to dashboard yourself. I think you, you delegate it to, to your team as well. So to maybe to your team. Yeah, for uh, some uh, stuff. Yeah, for AWS, we do, yeah. And then with the magic of management pack, what we are able to do is um, um, uh, transfer all of those um, sort of objects and, and metrics and status over to uh, SCUM, okay? Yep. So when you see, maybe take a, a more interesting example, maybe a sales lab, maybe a, someone that's mapped a, 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 an application with some Lambda functions, some metrics, you can put some monitors on it and there is a health follow-up and all of that is mimicked uh, into SCUM using a management pack. And because it's new into SCUM, so we are using here in this example Squared Up to kind of show you that it is then able to be used for dashboarding in, in SCUM, I guess, or in Squared Up as well. So you can see all of those objects are actually objects that we've mapped in Squared Up Cloud. That means you can have uh, maybe some workspace for an application, maybe for a platform, or perhaps for uh, maybe a team, maybe a, net, a networking team, for instance. Let's have a look. This one probably has got to have some some solo winds going on i would imagine yeah it looks like it's all green and then what you can sort of do is have your your, your dashboard your single pen of class if you want um in, in squared up with all the objects stored in scum um, and then uh, sort of find your way back over to to cloud as a drill that drill out if, if, if you need to get a little bit more uh, uh data essentially uh, that's probably a quick 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 view overview of the ecosystem um so um yeah, I guess so. Ash on the so you talked about so so solar winds. As there was a, obviously a, a, a blind spot, so you yeah. went ahead and essentially created some dashboards in Squared Up Cloud, some monitors as well that you yeah kind of yeah. So we basically basically hooked it up, chose the the nodes that we wanted to, put them into a scope, um, mm -hmm. and then deployed a, a, a dashboard within that solar winds workspace that was targeting basically the health state availability of the the our, our any Connect VPN nodes. Um, which was a kind of a first thing that yes, like I've got this and I can show it to somebody, but it was still a different dashboard to what um, a lot of the other teams were using because they were using the Squared Up for SCOM dashboards. So that's where the AMX come into it with feedback to to, to the product group that they'd be a, a great way of having that, which I see more as a 
an observability platform really going forward, which is what we'll come on to in a bit with how our AWS uh, data project teams are using it, but then also have the ability to use it as a as a gap fill for management packs that don't exist, or to be able to pull elements of those observability dashboards that require business critical 24-7 monitoring into Scrum and surface them through the single pane of glass. I know we said we wouldn't mention that single pane of glass, but it's <laughs> it's kind it's of the, the, isn't it? the, the, it's unavoidable. It's, the, it's what everybody wants. They want it all in one place, but it, it's a way of linking multiple integrations in that we can't mm -hmm. by default hook into Scrum. So. You had uh, provided a screenshot, I think, of the the after result, which is showing you a very simple yeah. uh, list of list of nodes, VPN host, I guess they were. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, all coming from. Oh, so you might be in Squad Cloud, done your monitors, uh, set some triggers, and that's how they all show yeah. us healthy. It's probably important to know at that point as well. So what we when we transfer essentially transfer or store objects into Scum from Squad Up Squad Up Cloud, we transfer the objects. Uh, we transfer the the health as well of those objects. That's really where mm. where the where where it kind of stops. It's very much that health status as opposed to the actual yeah. metric and the time series and so on that remains in spread of life. Um, um, and I guess with that, you are then able to do your usual sort of oh, that's I think that's a view of your yeah, that's, that's one of yeah. your spread of cloud dashboard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was really about grouping and 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 that 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 sort of lower level. So initially. Mm. You know, it was just the kind of overall health state of that of that tile, or for instance, and the mm -hmm. feedback we give to Squid Up Group was that you know that the way that we group things together is largely through SCOM groups. So the groups have memberships. So the the tiles on that one dashboard you see a a target in a group of certain devices or nodes, but mm -hmm. if people see that tile go red, they need to drill in and see the list of objects underneath. So that was where the, the extra work that you guys did with, with, with being able to go down a further level to the actual object data enabled yeah. me to basically replicate what people are seeing mm -hmm. here in the in the dashboard within Squared Up Cloud within a kind of group underneath it so that mm -hmm. if people saw those out of those 24, one of them was red. When they clicked in the sub level, it actually showed the list of those individual nodes and they could see which one was causing the issue on that on that page, which is enough for them level for them to go into, mm. but better than knowing we have one of our 24 down, for example. Mm. Yeah. So essentially Squared Up, yeah, Squared Up Cloud is just a platform, a means to get some some health from from objects in, in a yeah. very easy way, as we've seen it's kind of plug and play in, in some ways with plugins and then Scum is 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 your alerting that stays in place, so you're essentially feeling in yep. Scum, and 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 then uh, squared up is uh, as your dashboard, just 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 the yep. ability to have more 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 yeah. more info for your service desk to be basically. Yeah, doing, I, I think it's important more. to mention as well that obviously, um, when we've talked about this before, but Scum was kind of on its own, and then integrations came from Azure and Peter and then Microsoft and things like that, and. Uh, for one of going out and buying loads of new big products like Logic Monitor, other people like that would, would be to to focus on on creating a, a modern observability tool with the with the tools that I had. So in all, almost SCOM becomes the kind of data source or the data store. Squared up for SCOM is your visibility piece. And then what Squared Up Cloud and the AMX gives us is that proper kind of feed in then to where your plugins would normally come in. Mm. Uh, just to you know to cover all those those main gaps and obviously with our um aws team that are doing our data projects the huge that, that was a huge requirement and we had mm. those um you know that this that was be a real proof of, of what this tool the squared cloud code tool could do yeah I've, I've seen some of the dashboard that your your aws teams have built so it's less about availability and health it's really about what I'm showing off yeah. on, the, on the screen, this kind of metric yeah, from CloudWatch and, yeah. and um, um, the ability as well, you can configure sort of threshold and, 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 and triggers on every metric. So if if, if, it yeah. goes, if, if the error rate goes, goes beyond one, perhaps it's bad and therefore you can sort of alert upon uh, a, a specific metric as well. Um, yeah. How did your yeah. AWS team go about sort of onboarding themselves as a platform? Um, yeah, so um, the, the main requirement came in quite a while ago and we were trying to fulfill it with the AWS management pack, but it just wasn't seeing anything. And we kind of had to resort in the short term to just literally pulling CloudWatch alarms in via that management pack and forwarding them to, to the teams, which was really not, not what they wanted. Mm -hmm. The data projects team are trying to find a way of template all of our 
code or application de development and deployment at Arup to save us having this huge tool support because the APM side of it's even worse than what you'll see in infrastructure SCOM and all those other ones. Um, so basically, they had a, a set of requirements that they wanted to fulfill, and it was largely around modern observability. Um, so what we did was was literally shown that this application or the product Squid Up Cloud give them the access to it and let them actually onboard their own accounts, um, which has given them a, a big learning curve to, to go through it all, but also given you know a lot of feedback via our dedicated Slack channel to you guys that, that mm -hmm. we need this or can we have that metric or can we have this? So the additions and changes to the, to, to the actual plugins and how they work, um, but they've actually kind of standardized it now across a couple of accounts. Um, obviously, we're look, they're looking at coming the other way to the API to automate that, the integration from within their code. So, um, and, and the next phase is they, they're templating everything and basically copying what they would have in their CloudWatch dashboards. But these CloudWatch dashboards, you have to go to individually for each account in different regions and, and all the, the, so having them all here and they can just change workspaces really easily. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the next phase off that then will be to say, right, this is what we want from observability. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to be raised into a 24-7 team. So we'll pick the metrics off those and, and be able to configure those like we did with the AnyConnect nodes. Yeah. I guess the benefit for you is you get you get the health of what matters to them in SCOM and then you can carry on and do your, your They can do their own thing. They, they so they have to to their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can use them as they see fit and, and change them and look at the metrics for for yeah, for deployment and all sorts mm -hmm. of um functions that you probably you wouldn't put to a first line team anyway they just you know they pick the business critical ones and then they use this for their deep dive and investigation all in one place i guess um also to talk about uh so we talk about aws solar winds i mean no doubt i'm sure people on the this school will have all the thinking of all the tools or can i connect now my, my yeah. tool that isn't listed or um probably quick quick mention that at, at square yeah. we actually we have a dedicated team working on on the uh, on adding plugins pretty much by the day, by the week. I think we were able to deliver for, for you as the M MWA, Apache Airflow for AWS, Elastic Load Balancer. Yeah, that's a big code in, yeah. And Cisco DNA as well, which is another Cisco, complete product. Cisco DNA so. that is in yeah. corporate. We're actually working on it uh, right now with you, uh, with your help. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, more, more to come, uh, hopefully, but um, yeah, cool. Very exciting. It's um, pretty much it. Um, I think that hopefully that gives a, gives a a practical sense as to what is what is the AMX. I've just just got a final slide with a with a quick link if if people want to to basically find out more. But I I won't read through the slide. I think we've already spoken spoken about it in prep lines. Awesome. But that's one option, Bruce. <laughs> it is indeed one option, and uh, one that that is clearly evolving rapidly. But that's awesome. Lots of uh, lots of possibilities there. Um, let me just take back screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, yes, cool. Um, so I'm going to move on now to Connection Center, which is option two. Um, so Connection Center, you, you would have probably heard of in some regard, because I show this exact slide at the end of every single coffee break. So I'm going to whip through the slide really quickly. So Connection Center will connect SCOM to anywhere you want to connect it to, from ITSM tools like ServiceNow and ShareWell, through to everywhere else you want with webhooks. And this is all about pushing SCOM alerts out. But that's not the piece we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the other half, getting things into SCOM in the first place. You've heard about how with the AMX, you can uh, connect the Squared Up Cloud product into SCOM using a management pack to get in health and to get in objects. I'm going to focus now a bit on alerts, essentially, with a quick demo of how this works. At its simplest level, we essentially make SCOM a webhooks listener, uh, able to do things with uh, received webhooks. And I'm going to give you a really quick demo of it. And this is it. Um, so essentially, uh, we're in the SCOM console right now, and we're in the Connection Center UI. And this is inbound notifications we're in. Um, so to set up SCOM as a listener, it's all UI driven. So you go to Add Connection. You would say, I want to create a listening webhook. Um, you'd give it a name, uh, you know, test uh, test name. The name appears in the URL, which you're standing up as a, as a listener. Um, you enable the connection. So the next thing you do is either provide a payload, which is the shape of the sorts of information that this webhook will receive, or 
um, you specify use last receive payload. Now, because I'm creating a brand new one of these, there has been no payload received. So what I've got in the background, that there I see they've gone into error state in between me setting them up earlier and now, we'll see if they work. The joys of live demos um, is that you can then push a SCOM, uh, push webhooks into SCOM and use what was received to shape the alerts that you're going to raise. Um, so what I'm now going to do is um, I'm going to cancel out of this wizard. I'm going to show you um, one of these guys, which are, is a pre-set up blank uh, connection. This is just literally a blank listener that has never received a, a, a payload. And what we're going to do is using Postman, classic Postman, we're going to uh, mimic essentially sending, uh, sending a webhook in in the same form that a real tool would do it would do so this is my uh, this is my json payload essentially um the server is down message give it a kick some information about the thing that's down um some status information and that's kind of about it if we send this in uh let's see if, if the error that's on in uh displaying in in scom is going to break my demo but one way to find out i guess which is to send this request in and to hope for the best um sending requests now and with any luck, what should happen is I should be able to go back into SCOM and to modify my existing connection and to use all of the properties of the received payload. Oh, could not send request, timed out. All right, no problem. What we're going to do then is go to, um, oh, everything is not working. Um, Prometheus Alert, we're going to have a look at the error here then maybe and see what's actually going on. Or maybe we'll do that in a minute. We'll have a look at the connection I've already got set up here. Um, so you can see one I sort of set up earlier. Um, I wish I'd pre-recorded this now. So we have in here the information of where we're going to be sending uh, webhooks to. In this case, I have sent uh, payloads to this connection earlier on today. And these are the details that I received. So from this, we're going to use the, using the liquid format, details from this to shape the sorts of alerts that are raised in SCOM on this screen here. So the alerts that are raised are given a name. Um, they are given a priority and a severity. And then the alert description is a mixture of text and the liquid format, which takes properties from the receive payload um, and they're parameterized. So you can see here, we've put in details.server, um, which returns the name of my server. If I go back to my previous screen, you'll see that under parent of details, I have a sub property of server, which contains ops to 22 DB. And you get the idea. We're basically dot walking the properties of these things. Um, if I just take out, let's use, um, let's take out server here, we can actually display all the possible options here, you see it auto completes in the example below. So we've got uh, details, um, this details property contains an ID, in this case, the ID is one, a server, the name is this, and an FQDN and an IP, etc. Obviously, no surprise, because we know from our sample payload, the one that was previously received, these are the properties. Um, but then to use those, we would just type in the specific property and question. So I want to use, let's say IP, just for the sake of a demo. And you'll see it's auto completing below, you get the idea. Um, so you can also, on SCOM alerts, use the custom fields and specify the properties from your SCOM alert go there as well. Um, I've put the IP address into my custom field one, and then I've got uh, information around alert state. So it's all well and good raising alerts in SCOM, but what's the good in having a whole pile of never ending open alerts when really the source system, you want to be able to close those alerts as well. In order for alerts to be closed, we have to be able to match them um, to figure out which is essentially the close to the open that's received. And we do this using the alert key template. And then um, we have provided more, more uh, liquid to say which property of the received payload contains the thing we're going to be mapping on. I've used, going back to that payload, I have used the server, name, server property and um, Oops, wrong tab. Again, it's returning the server name. We then need to specify which, where should I look for the open close piece of information? And in this case, I'm using the status text property of my sample payload. 
which is this here, which will contain open or closed. And um, here we go. In this case, it's it can last receive one contains closed. The next thing we're going to to do is to join this uh, to objects essentially. Now there are two ways in which this can operate. Uh, we've got no manual object creation and we've got configure manual object creation. If you select the first object, the, sorry, first option, a single object is created, uh, which uh, is for the uh, a connection itself. So in this case, Prometheus Alerts is the name of my connection. Um, so then all of the alerts raised are going to be against that same object. In this case, we've provided some objects which are created manually in SCOM as objects in the SCOM object model. Now you can either type these manually. So if I wanted to add a number five in here and call it whatever, literally whatever in this case, I could do that. Um, or I can import them from a CSV. And then we're going to use more of that liquid format to specify what from my payload maps to the object key column in the imported data. Now, obviously, you can shape this data however you want. Um, predicting the inevitable question at the moment, this is all done manually. It's not dynamic. Um, that's something that we might consider um, if requested enough by customers in the future. But for today, it's all done manually. So there is an objects tie in as well. There is a way it's a bit more complicated. So I'm not planning to do it today to tie these things back to um, back to objects that already exist in your SCOM object model, but done with events. This is the simple case rather than the advanced case. Everything we have created is stored in SCOM in a management pack. Um, which is the option that I've selected. And then on the summary screen, um, you see what we're going to create, including all the objects. You would hit finish and it would go off and do its thing. Now, normally this is where I would go and show me pushing using good old Postman, a, a webhook, but given this error message I've got here, that I'm probably not going to have the time to troubleshoot live on the demo, demo, this isn't going to happen. So I'm going to go to the monitoring tab, cook down endpoint offline. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna show you one I sent in earlier, essentially, um, to give you a flavor for what they look like, how they feel. Um, so at least I have this one I can show you. So this one you can see is correlated to the object that I manually created called Ops22DB. And my alert description matches what you saw earlier. Um, if you were to go and actually open uh, the uh, Health Explorer, you should see um, the, oh, I'm in the wrong place, don't worry, and um, all the information that, that came in with the event that was received essentially. Oh, custom field one, I did put it on here already, cool. So you've got the IP address here stored in the custom field of the alerts. You can see it's doing the property mapping. And if my endpoint were not offline, it would close automatically as well. Again, the joys of doing a live demo, but you get the idea. Because this is essentially agnostic to wherever you're sending webhooks from, obviously I'm using Postman, I'm cheating. You can uh, use this with any tool that can send a webhook. Uh, it's very flexible, very versatile. You can shape the payloads uh, to match the sorts of data you might want to send in. And this is another option. So here we are in the SCOM console. We're in the administration pane and we're looking at the connection center UI. We're handling alerts and we're handling receiving alerts. So um, inbound is what we're currently on. Now um, you can see my existing connections here. I'm going to start by adding a new connection to demonstrate one piece of functionality. I'm going to add a webhooks connection, which will listen, um, essentially. We're going to create a blank one um, because uh, we want um, blank. I'm just going to call it blank for a second. Uh, the URL it will listen on is this here, which includes blank, the name here. Um, the reason why I'm going to create a blank connection without any configuration at all is um, these the, the alerts that are raised by webhooks received are shaped by payloads. We use parameter parameterized components from payloads received, um, but I haven't received any yet because it's a blank connection. So I'm going to just literally next, next, finish through the wizard. We're then going to push in the payloads to this connection and show you how that payload can be used. So I'm just going to literally next, next, finish all the fields of this wizard quickly. Um, it will take a while to discover. Every webhook is, uh, 
is essentially discovered by SCOM, so it will take five to 10 minutes for SCOM to discover the webhook, and you'll see that state in the UI. It will go into a state waiting for connection test, there it is, blank, there it is. So we'll come back to this one in a minute. And while this is being discovered by SCOM, we're going to look at um, this one, which is um, in true demo style. Here's one I created earlier. Um, so this one, if I modify this one, so this one is called Prometheus Alerts to simulate effectively receiving um, messages from Prometheus. I'm actually going to cheat in my demo and use good old Postman to push uh, push alerts in from Postman. Um, you can see this one has received uh, a payload. Uh, this is my payload here. And you can see from that, we're taking details from that payload received to shape the sorts of alerts received. And here we've got a mix of just text and parameters so server details for example here are parameterized this is the liquid format and uh, details was a parent class server was a child class in the payload received if I go back one so we've got details then we've got server like that and in this case the server is ops 22 db and that is what I have in my example. Obviously, this example doesn't matter. It's just representative of the sort of things that will happen uh, when webhooks that look like this are received by this connection. So there we go. Uh, this shapes the sort of thing we're going to set up in SCOM. On the next screen, we can also use uh, parameterized liquid to, to populate the alerts custom field. So I'm putting the IP address in custom field one, for example, which was under details.ip. You can see I'm just dot walking the properties. Here it is, details.ip. Uh, another thing I should show you quickly in alert settings is um, this will kind of auto-complete um, in the example box below so you can see the sorts of things you're going to get. Um, so if I type in here details, this is case sensitive. Close that off. You get, here we go. Now I spelt it right, um, we have all of the properties that are underneath details. So we have ID, we have server, we have FQTN, along with the values. So I can just dot walk the property. So if I want the value to be used to be the IP, I'll just go dot IP, it's case sensitive. And I should get the IP address here. Um, you get the idea. So you get a, it's a intuitive um, format. You can also do things that are regex like uh, conditional logic. If A and B are X, then do this kind of thing, uh, which is quite cool. It gives you lots of flexibility. Um, so we've talked about that one already. Next thing to talk about here is alert state mapping. So uh, it's unlikely you're going to want every single received webhook to be raised as an alert. There'll be some, you'll want them to open and close essentially the alerts in SCOM based on what's happening in the source system. But to do that, we need to say, uh, provide a way of identifying incoming webhooks as coming from the same system, the same server, whatever it might be. And that's provided with the alert key template. In this case, I'm saying match based on the server property, which in this case is ops22db. And then we need to tell it where to look for the open and close property essentially and status test is where I'm looking and from the received data I had received one that said open and that's what I received but the words I'm going to look for in this property are the words close um, so that's important because obviously um, if I receive open it will receive it will raise another new alert as soon as I receive a close it will close off that alert and that's what we're looking for so then we've got matching uh, raised alerts to objects so there are two options here, no manual object creation, um, which means that all alerts are associated with a default object, which is given the same name as the connection, or configure, configure manual object creation. So in this case, the objects created, you can either type them manually below, like this, you know, whatever, um, or you can load them from a CSV. Um, typically, we see people uh, download from source systems a list of CSV objects, which they upload here. It needs to look like this, so object key, object name, and object description, and those are stored into SCOM's object model, and the uh, alerts are associated with the correct one uh, based on what you provide here, which is how should I match them, which parameter of the received webhooks contain the object key. Um, and in this case, it's my ID parameter. You can see it contains uh, one in my example, which is clear it's going to be this one from my list of objects. Uh, then you specify where this is stored. It's stored in SCOM, obviously, in a management pack, and there's a default, or you can use it, the one, whatever you want. So you want. 
I've shown a summary and you hit finish to save all of that in SCOM, but obviously I already have that set up. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is to send in an alert using Postman to Prometheus Alerts. So for this, I'll go to Postman. So this is the message I want to send in. Uh, but let me just modify the URL Prometheus Alerts. I think it was, wasn't it? Let me just check that. Prometheus Alerts. Yes, it was. Good, because otherwise it will not be received. And um, this is my payload, exactly the same as what we saw before. I'm expecting that this will be raised as an alert in SCOM. So if I hit send, insert, uh, uh, event inserted, message, message successfully attached to Prometheus Alerts, Prometheus Alerts dot one. So it's found an object as well. If I now go to the monitoring tab and um, give it a moment, maybe refresh, what I'm expecting to see is an alert that is raised. So I'm not seeing the, the alert um, being received, but what I think is happening is it's incrementing the repeat count. Let me just put the repeat count column on, on here. Repeat count, there it is. Repeat count, yeah, it's incrementing the repeat count of my alert. Um, that's okay, not the end of the world. Let me just drag this column a little bit further this way so we can see the effect of sending in these alerts. So because essentially this is a, an alert that was already open, you can see this one had been open for uh, 19 hours. Um, we are, and it's literally the same message again, essentially it's incrementing this repeat count. So you can see it's currently on two. If I hit send again in Postman, send, there we go, it's sent in again. I should see this increment to three in a second or two. There it is, incremented to three. So clearly it's being received. You can see the shape of the alerts here. You can see its um, source is the object I wanted it to be associated with, which is the one I manually created called ops22db. And all of the properties of the alert are there. And um, there we go. That's how it works, essentially. Um, we can also demonstrate its closing. So I said close was the property to match on, um, the text to match on in this um, alert uh, um, status te test string. So if I now send this one in and then quickly go back to SCOM, what I should see is that this alert is closed off. Let's see if that works as expected. Ta-da, there it is. Um, and that's essentially how it works. Really, really straightforward piece of functionality, really powerful, and it will allow you to connect to any system that will send via webhook. Um, so there we are, allows you to connect all of your systems. Alerts to SCOM. Uh, final thing to quickly show you is in Discovered Inventory, if you look here at uh, my class, Cookdown Webhook Guest Objects, these are all of the manually created objects. And this is the one we've been playing with today, but you can see all of the other ones in there as well. And that's how Connection Center works for webhooks. Going back to slides. Um, oh, go I was going to ask, but I think you answered the if the, if the tool supports webhooks, I guess you, you're good to go pretty much, right? Is that fair to say? Uh, Essentially, yeah. yeah. A any system that will support pushing events or alerts via webhook, we can consume those and raise them as SCOM, as, avert, as events or alerts. Um, mm -hmm. Either way is possible. Um, so a very powerful tool. Um, I'm now going to move on to some other free alternatives that we've heard of before that will give you a bit more um, scope for something that isn't, isn't a paid for product. And the first one I'm going to look at is something uh, by a guy called David Smith, uh, who presented at a coffee break uh, probably about a year ago now. And he's built a solution that's kind of architected like this. It's a .NET managed module for memory that is an executable um, that will let you consume uh, alerts and events essentially from any system, um, works by by using PowerShell from memory and uh, can be adapted because he's made the source code open source um, to any source uh, rather than just being VR ops, but they use it um, for VR ops. Everything you need to know is on scomathon.com at this link. And of course we've got um, David Smith's own GitHub um, blog, which details how the thing works and the source code as well, because it's open source. Um, available there. I won't go into sort of the detail because one, I'm not the expert in the system and two, it was pre-recorded in a coffee break so you can see it from previous coffee break content. Next up, we have um, Nathan Foreman's API query management pack. Um, this one has a UI 
And Nathan Foreman, for those who, who don't, don't know, don't remember, was uh, the winner of Hackerscom 2021, which is Scomathon's annual hackathon. Essentially, he's also my uh, my partner in crime with Kickdown. Uh, we work together day to day on stuff. He's the architect for our products. Um, but his solution allows you to uh, query uh, APIs, essentially, via a method. You see he's using the get method here in the screenshot um, to do monitoring on top of them. And again, this was pre-recorded, so you can have a look at what he built. Um, you can also look at his approach to building it. Hackerspot, Hackerscom was a 24-hour uh, timed challenge, essentially. So we, we took him from what are you going to build to here it is in completed form. Also, the code is uh, online. It's online and is free. It's on GitHub, so feel free to take a look and to consume it from there. So there are some free alternatives out there as well. Um, but again, this is the classic build it by argument. At one end of the scale, you have um, just crack open, you know, PowerShell or VS Code or whatever it is and, and, and start writing something yourself through to the other end of the spectrum where you have the likes of EAMX and Connection Center with some of the free community offerings or somewhere in between. Um, these things are going are gonna to be more time consuming, but are free. So there is something out there for everyone budget making use of scom's awesome uh, flexibility essentially and the community to uh, to come up with solutions to your problems so just time for a quick word from our sponsors uh, one of our sponsors is uh, is squared up so uh, vincent as you're here I'll, I'll let you speak to squared up yes yeah, thank you bruce yes so basically squared up provides a, a visualization layer on top of scom i mean we all know scom is Great at providing data, but less so when it comes to visualizing and dashboarding. Uh, and Squared Up basically comes with all the out of the box dashboards that you need, uh, easy to build uh, interface as well, so you can really easily share your your dashboards with with anyone. Um, it also allows you so not only just the data from Scum, but allows you to visualize that Scum data alongside your other tools, but also the ability to map your enterprise applications with our unique uh, discovery engine, which we call Veda. Uh, as you can see on the left with all the basically all the beautiful screenshots yeah sounds good thank you i would i would agree squared up is essentially essential for being successful with scom um, usually i would put here a slide for cookdown which is the company that, that i represent and i would talk about connection center but given i've just done a demo of connection center i feel that would be kind of redundant so uh, all i'll say is if you want to hear more, more about cookdown or like what you saw today go to cookdown.com forward slash connection dash center everything you need to know is there you can take a trial uh, get a demo or ask any questions you didn't get a chance to ask today all right so without further ado it's i'll turn it over to q a and i'll start with a q a uh, a question that has come in via slack from scott who says in connection center how is the object loaded to associate with the alert uh -huh. um so if i go back to my demo lab uh, dum -dum -dum, and go back into administration so when we created this uh this listener essentially uh, if I next through this, we provided via CSV or by manually typing a list of objects. These are discovered by SCOM and are scored, stored in SCOM. If I go now to monitoring and go to discovered inventory, I'm already on the right class here. So they are essentially children of this class, which is our cookdown webhook guest object, essentially. And here they are. Um, along with their state, obviously, if they've got uh, alerts against them, they will appear here. And that is how that is done. Are there any other questions? If so, we'll take them via either GoToWebinar or via Slack. I have a question that came, uh, came through the, the chat. Um, can I build my own plugin? Uh, so we've got the on the 50 plus plugin, so someone is saying I have a proprietary platform. I can't pronounce it. They have their own platform uh, on, on premise, and then how, how could they build their own plugin? Right, today you, you you can't build your own plugin, but it will be uh, possible uh, in the future as we are going to essentially open source our GitHub repositories of plugins. So you'll be able to do that. Right now, your best solution would be to potentially use our custom PowerShell plugin, which is essentially lets you connect to your platform, import the, the objects in, in Squared Up, uh, store the objects, and then um, add your own, own metrics, uh, essentially. So there, there are ways to do that. Probably the best thing is to yeah, get, get in touch with us and we'll be, be happy to sort of uh, walk you, walk you through, through that. Sounds good. 
Are there any other questions? We'll just give it a minute, either via the chat or via Slack once more. Just give it a moment and keep Slack up on my phone here, which is why I'm looking down. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will take silence to me no. Well, if anything does come to mind after the webinar ends, there's always Slack. Slack is constantly open. Um, so feel free to post them there. So without further ado then, um, before I say thank you, just wanted to put in a quick plug for the next HackerScom event. So you saw Nathan Foreman's uh, API query management pack from November uh, of last year. We're doing it all again this year. So we're giving you um, a chance to compete and of course to watch. And at the point you register, we really like to hear from you. So please do tell us what to build essentially. Um, at the point you register, we'll ask you, what would you like our contestants to build? And how it works is we'll curate that list and um, the best uh, uh, options essentially will get put directly to our contestants to build. Um, so not only is it a, a much more interesting challenge, but also for you as um, the community, it means you get an awesome management pack out the other side, as well as knowledge mm -hmm. of how to build said awesome management pack. So please do have a look. And that's at scomathon.com forward slash hackerscom dash 2022. Um, so with all of that said and done, all that's left to do is to say thank you very much to all of you for watching and for listening. I hope this has been uh, interesting for you. And thank you to you, Ash, and to you, Vincent, for joining me today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Boris. Thank you. Um, our next coffee break will be uh, on the same cadence as ever. Uh, next time, we're going to be joined by Dion Walsham, hopefully, who's going to be going deep with his new SCCM MP, which is free and open source. Um, so we'll see that next time. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and watching. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye.